Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. With the current GPU market being what it is, integrated graphics have never been more important than they are here today. And with Intel updating their UHD lineup with the new Z graphics, I wanted to go ahead and see what sort of performance level we should expect out of such iGPUs. I went ahead and picked up the i5-11400 non-F, obviously because we need the integrated graphics, and I thought to myself, I'm like, what sort of performance level am I kind of expecting out of this? And I just so happened to have the world's first DirectX 11 GPU ever, the 2009 Radeon 5870. So I'm like, I think that that should be the level of performance that we as consumers should be expecting from 2021 level integrated graphics. So I wanted to see how the brand new UHD 730 would compare against the Radeon HD 5870. And that's what we're gonna be taking a look at here today. But first, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare offers classes in animation, design, photography, film, web design, financing, marketing, pretty much anything that you would like to learn about from the comfort of your own home. A particular class that caught my eye by Justin Bridges is the fundamentals of DSLR photography. This class will help me learn how to use my camera, because I use a DSLR, to deliver better image quality for you guys here on YouTube. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, coming in at less than $10 per month for an annual subscription. But even better, right now, for the first 1,000 people to use the link in the video description, we'll get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership, so you can explore your creativity. Don't pass up this excellent offer. Head on over to Skillshare using the link in the description below and start learning here today. Now, back to the video. All right, so before we go over performance, let's go over the parts a little bit. If you guys are unaware, the 5870 came out back in 2009, September 23rd, 2009 to be exact. It is the world's first DirectX 11 GPU, and the model that I'm using is the two gigabyte model. That's why it has six uh, mini display ports on there. It was the Ifinity card from way back when. Obviously, this will be used on the same test system with the Core i5-11400. That's paired with the ASRock H510 ITX motherboard. I went with the H510 as the 11400 supports DDR4 3200 natively. I don't need memory overclocking as that's the kit that we're using. 16 gigabytes DDR4 3200 CL16 with a one terabyte NVMe. Now let's go check out the performance and see if Intel's new iGPU can compete with a 12 year old discrete graphics card. All right, so like what I did with the UHD 630, we're gonna start with Fear from 2005. We're looking at the Radeon 5870, and obviously this is more than enough to handle this game. Well over 100 FPS, 1080p, max settings. So this makes sense. It's a 2005 game on a 2009 GPU. Switching on over to the UHD 730, were somewhere in between 30 and 40 FPS during more demanding scenes. This obviously is nowhere near the level of the HD 5870. In fact, looking at the performance results, the maximum FPS on the 730 is 100 FPS, whereas the minimum FPS on the 5870 is 103. So yeah, these two GPUs are nowhere in the same league for DirectX 9 gaming at least. Next game I tested was Gears of War from 2006. The 5870 locked at 60 FPS, no problems. There's one spot where it dips a little bit when there's a lot of alpha effects, but for the most part, we're not even touching maximum GPU utilization here. This game can be unlocked, but obviously I just wanted to see if we could just run at a solid 60 FPS as that's the way you're probably gonna play this game. The UHD 730 does not fare anywhere near as well. Look at that frame time graph. The game doesn't seem anywhere near as choppy as that seems to be indicating, but at the same time, we're around 30 to 40 FPS once again. Now, in the UHD 630, DirectX 10 seemed to work a lot better than DX9, but we're seeing about the same performance level here 
with the UHD 730 as we did in DirectX 9. I decided to jump ahead a bit to 2012's Max Payne 3. This is running at 1080p high settings. And the 5870 having no problem, well over 60 FPS, reaching anywhere between 80 and 90 pretty much on average. Now the UHD 730 does better in this title, averaging between 30 and 40 FPS once again. Now this is a much more demanding game than the other games that we were seeing, but it's still holding that 30 to 40 FPS range. So 1080p high 30 is playable, and it does show that DirectX 11 titles on the UHD 730 are going to be significantly better than DX9 or 10. And the last game I decided to test was Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. The Far Cry 3 Duina engine is actually very difficult for last-gen GPUs, so I wanted to see if the 5870 would be able to handle it, and it's done a really good job. We're well over 60 FPS for the most part, so this delivers a very good gaming experience. Looking at the UHD 730, we're getting about 25 to 30 FPS, so we're getting a little less than half the frame rate that we were seeing on the 5870, which isn't too bad considering what we were seeing before. It's clear DirectX 11 runs much, much better on these Intel GPUs than DX9 or 10, so it's not the best experience. Obviously, you could lower settings and probably play at 30 FPS locked at 1080p, but in my opinion, that's just not good enough. Well, after looking at the performance, no. We can definitely say the UHD 730 does not compete with the 5870. In fact, best case scenario is about half the performance. And that was in Max Payne 3, where the 5870 was getting 80 to 90 FPS. The 730 was getting 30 to 40. Sometimes it would get around 45 FPS. So it was somewhere around half the performance level. Uh, in Far Cry 3, it was a little less than half. And then in DirectX 9 and 10, it just wasn't even close. The 5870 is far superior. Intel really needs to fix their drivers on those older games. Most seventh generation games, that's your Xbox 360 to PS3 era. So basically 2013, all the way back to about 2005. Any game in there is basically seventh gen. Those are the games that you would expect Intel integrated graphics to be good at. The problem is the DirectX 9 driver just isn't good enough. It, it's not delivering the type of performance that we would expect. So you can't even play the games that you would expect integrated graphics to play. So it's a real shame that they didn't fix that this time around. We saw the same problem with the UHD 630. I would say overall the 730 is much faster, especially in DirectX 11 titles, than the 630 was. The 630 had trouble at 720p. This was at least able to do 1080p gaming. It's just going to be like 1080p 30 with compromised settings. So is it worth gaming on? If you absolutely have to, yes, I would say it's fine. But realistically, the real story here is the fact that the HD 5870 was able to just wipe the floor with these games. It had no problems at all. And those GPUs you can still pick up relatively cheap. A 5870 or a 6870, basically anything pre-Kepler and pre-GCN, those aren't in high demand as nobody really thinks to use those. But if you're looking to play older games, 7th generation games on back, those GPUs are going to do just fine. You can get them for 40, 50 bucks still. In today's market, I would actually recommend doing that instead of using the Intel integrated graphics. Just play old games on an old GPU. Don't spend a lot of money on it, so when you do upgrade, you know, six months or a year from now, you're not out a whole lot of money. And honestly, you could probably resell it at that point for basically what you paid for it, because these things have pretty much bottomed out at this point. So, yeah, to me, that's the real story here, is the fact that these old graphics cards, like the 5870, is still good. I even tried some 8th gen games, like Shadow of Mordor, 1080p, low, medium settings, 60 FPS. That blew me away. I was going to save that for another video, but I don't think there's enough there. I might buy some other old GPUs. I have a GTX 580 behind me. Unfortunately, it doesn't work, but maybe something like that, and we'll see how far down the road we can push these guys. Uh, the 5870 basically capped out at Witcher 3. It could do about 1080p, 30 on low settings. That That's kind of the max that I could get out of that thing which is pretty impressive considering it came out in 2009 
and is way before games like Witcher 3 were really supposed to be running. So I found that very impressive. And honestly, if you're out there and you're like, my GPU just blew up, I want to play some older games, I would just buy something really, really old at this point. Get a Terascale uh, AMD GPU or get like Fermi on back from NVIDIA. Uh, obviously, you probably want DirectX 11 support. So basically, you're looking at Fermi or the 5000 or 6000 series from AMD. Now, Intel really needs to step up their game on their DX9 drivers. If they can resolve that and give us basically the performance that we're seeing in DX11 under DirectX 9, most old DX9 games should work. So hopefully they see this and maybe somebody else will bring this up to them and then they get on that and that can get fixed. But realistically, we should be expecting about twice the performance that we're seeing out of Rocket Lake's iGPU at this point in time. Once my Aya Neo comes in with the Ryzen 4500U, I'll be able to test out where AMD's iGPUs are here today. If you guys are interested in that kind of stuff and you want to help support the channel, uh, please consider becoming a Patreon member over on Patreon. Links are in the description below. It helps me get this stuff on hands. You guys can let me know what APUs or old GPUs it is that you'd like me to test and kind of see how far down the road we can make them work. For me, the most interesting thing about these crazy times is seeing what you can do with the absolute minimum hardware because you can't just go out and buy anything at any reasonable prices. So making do with what options are available, I kind of like that. I find that interesting. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Once again, if you like these type of videos, please smash that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That also helps out a ton. And I thank you all for your support. But that's all I really have for you here today. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.